So this video is going to expand on the original MCAT math video that I did, which was relatively short. Basically, there's some stuff that I think I can explain a little bit more, and there's some new stuff that I've added in this one. Now, unlike most of my videos, there will not be questions at the end, but there are questions throughout. Uh, so let's do it. Starting off, I provided this table in the last video, and I said you should have these values memorized. They may give them to you on the test if triggers needed, but they may not, so play it safe. Anyway, most answer choices won't be in radical form, so what good does memorizing radicals do you? None. So here's the updated version with decimals. Commit this one to memory. Obviously, sine and cosine are opposites, cosine decreasing from 0 to 90 degrees, and sine vice versa. Tangent, you don't need to memorize, and you can derive it from sine and cosine values if you remember that it's simply sine over cosine. So, this decimal chart is good and all, but probably is more decimal places than you care to remember. So let's simplify it even further to this. This one should take almost no effort to memorize now, and it brings us to the next topic, approximation. Now, in the last video, I said that you're expected to approximate the math. For instance, gravity you treat as 10 meters per second squared. But I didn't provide examples of how to approximate, and that's a question I get all the time when tutoring. So here's an example. A yodeler bounces his voice off a cliff face and the echo returns to him. This takes 2.7 seconds and the speed of sound is 337 meters per second. How far away is the cliff? So right away, I'm going to treat 337 as 340. I know a lot of people like rounding to the nearest 50, but try and get in the habit of rounding to the nearest penultimate place. If the number is in the hundreds, round to the nearest ten. If it's in the thousands, round to the nearest hundred, and so on. I'm also going to round the total time to three seconds. The last thing to realize for this question is that we want the distance to the cliff, and the time we're given is the time it takes the sound to reach the cliff and come back. So that means our rounded time becomes 1.5 seconds. So, velocity times time gives us distance. 340 times 1.5 is 510, so the answer is C, right? Wrong. The answer is B, 460 meters. And you can certainly arrive at this using the actual values and doing the math out on paper, but a lot of people are pressed for time on the MCAT, and quick mental math is a good place to gain some of that time back. Now, when you approximate, you have to consider how you've approximated relative to the actual values shown here. In both cases, we have overestimated the real value. Not so much for the speed of sound, because I round to the nearest 10, not nearest 50. That's why I uh, advocated for that. But by overestimating, this means that the real answer should be less than what we get. It works vice versa, too. If you underestimate the given values, the real answer will be greater than what you get. So that's why it's B, 460 meters. Uh, and that brings us back to the trig chart. Realize that if you use 0.9 for sine or cosine, that the real answer will be slightly less because the actual value is 0.866. Okay, moving on to approximating square roots, which you see in vector addition, projectile motion, and whatnot. Obviously, if the number is close to a perfect square, then approximating its root is simple. Like the square root of 34 is about 6. Uh, but what do you do if it's not that close? Like, what if it's 56, the square root of 56? Well, what I do is consider the perfect squares above and below it. In this case, that's 49 and 64, 7 squared and 8 squared. Now, given that 56 is more or less equidistant between these, the square root should be in the middle of 7 and 8, about 7 and a half, which it is. If it's not nice in the, in the middle, though, like with 52, give it your best estimate. Again, I consider the perfect squares on either side, 49 and 64 again. Now, using the difference between the perfect squares as the denominator, which is 15, and the difference between your number and the lower perfect square, the lesser perfect square, 52 minus 49, as the numerator, we get 3 fifteenths or 1 fifth. So we should expect the root to be around 7 and a fifth, 7.2. And again, it is approximately 7.2. Uh, this very same method works for any number, as far as I know. 
and here are some more for practice. If you care to do them, pause the video now as the answers will appear in about five seconds. Okay, there they are. Now on to the last bit, choose your own number, not adventure. Now, this is something I recommend when the algebraic method of solving the problem just isn't coming to you right away. So the question is, a jogger can complete one lap on a circular track in 60 seconds. If that track were converted into a walkalator, those walking platforms they have at airports, the jogging jogger could complete the lap in 90 seconds just standing there. If he were to run on this walkalator track, how fast could he complete the lap? An easy way to do this would be knowing the distance of the track, but it's not given. This is similar to kinematics questions, where final velocity of a ball thrown in the air isn't given, but you have to realize that it's zero at its peak. So since the distance isn't given, we can choose our own, and it can be anything you want. But keep it simple. My first instinct is usually 10 if the numbers are small. In this case, my first instinct was 100. But what works best is if the distance is a multiple of both given values. So I'm going to choose 180 meters. Now that we have a distance, we can figure out how fast the jogger is going in each case, which would be 3 meters per second jogging on the normal track and 2 meters per second standing on the walk -a -later. Combining these cases, which is what the question ultimately requires us to do, yields 5 meters per second jogging on the walk -later, which is still 180 meters, and at that speed he would finish a lap in 36 seconds. So that's choose your own number. And that's it. Again, no questions at the end of this one. There were enough examples throughout, and your own studying materials are really the best place to practice mental MCAT math. And as always, please feel free to ask questions or comment on anything in this video.